Good morning. It's Tuesday, June 25th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Patience for the Empty Times. And our scripture is Job, chapter 18. Surely the light of the wicked will be snuffed out. The sparks of their fire will not glow. The light in their tent will grow dark. The lamp hanging above them will be quenched. The confident stride of the wicked will be shortened. Their own schemes will be their downfall. The wicked walk into a net. They fall into a pit. A trap grabs them by the heel. A snare holds them tight. A noose lies hidden on the ground. A rope is stretched across their path. Terrors surround the wicked and trouble them at every step. Hunger depletes their strength and calamity waits for them to stumble. Disease eats their skin, death devours their limbs. They are torn from the security of their homes and are brought down to the king of terrors. The homes of the wicked will burn down, burning sulfur rains on their houses. Their roots will dry up and their branches will wither. All memory of their existence will fade from the earth. No one will remember their names. They will be thrust from light into darkness, driven from the world. They will have neither children, nor grandchildren, nor any survivor in the place where they lived. People in the West are appalled at their fate. People in the East are horrified. They will say, this was the home of a wicked person, the place of one who rejected God. The overarching message of the book of Job is that God is in charge, and ultimately will balance everything. Good will be rewarded and evil will also be recompensed. It's the law of the harvest. You reap later than you sow, you reap more than you sow, but you definitely reap what you sow. At some time in our lives, most of us look at the world's culture and shake our heads in disbelief. It must have been that way for Job. I must confess that last week at annual conference, I did a little head-rattling questioning myself. The question is more of a shell shock exclamation. If you'd told me 30 years ago things would be like this, I would have told you you're crazy. And then reality hits. You're still in shock, but you have to begin to admit that the culture in which we imagined we were still living no longer exists. And you're smack dab in the middle of one of those empty times. The insides have been ripped from you, and your legs are too wobbly to stand, and you lift your face heavenward to ask, What's up with this, God? What do I do now? That's where our friend Bildad comes in. When it looks like everything's come unglued, when it looks like game over and you're on the short stick and nothing will ever again make sense, Bildad says, Hold on, bud. You're forgetting who's really in charge. Have a little faith in God. You don't want to be an evil person who rejects God. That's what tossing your confidence in the Almighty really is. You're being a rejecter who's going to be rejected. The bottom line for Job was the last chapter of his story, not the first, or the ensuing pain of losing his family and position, wealth, and even children. That was the entrance to the valley of questioning, struggle to hold on, questioning of everybody around him, and the war to keep the faith. Eventually, Job's life turned back to blessing. It even turned out better than it was before. For you today, if you find it hard to keep the faith sometimes, put this on your tool belt and pull it out when the battle gets really hard and you don't know if you can hold on. Isaiah 54:17 But in that coming day no weapon turned against you will succeed you will silence every voice raised up to accuse you these benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord their vindication will come from me I the Lord have spoken You chew on that as you hit the rocky road have a blessed day <laughs>